Hey guys, Zach here. Welcome back to another live mixing session. Today we're actually going to be working on a worship track. That's just my niche. I know it doesn't get as many views as some of the other ones, like, you know, your standard rock or whatever. But this is what uh, I do most of my mixing in. It's the genre I, I feel most comfortable in. And so I figure we're going to keep cranking them out on the channel. For this particular track, this is a actual live worship recording. It was actually recorded at a wedding. Um, I'm going to post links to the artist down in the description below. It's called Words Aren't Enough. And we're actually going to be starting off with just organizing our logic project and dialing in that rough mix. So, with that said, let's jump right in. Alright, so we have a brand new logic project here. The first thing I like to do before doing anything else is just save it. And I will explain why in a second. So we're going to save it. And with Logic, I always pick this folder option. Um, so organize my project as a folder. This is more old school, like Logic 8, Logic 9. <clears throat> For some reason in Logic 10, they added this package option, which, which like really sucks. Um, I like being able to see the files, the audio files, the bounces folder. I'm not sure about this whole package option. Because um, it just puts everything in one. And then you're kind of... The only way to see what's in your project is to do a show package contents, which is annoying. So definitely pick this one. I'm going to save that. And so the reason we save it first is then it'll create our audio files folder. And then what we can do is bring up Finder. We can go grab our multi-tracks and copy them all. Come on. Copy them all into that newly created audio files folder. Then we'll open up our bin. Go to add audio file. And then we're just going to select the ones that we just dragged in there. And the reason we do that is because if we were to do this and they weren't already in there, then Logic would create a bunch of overview, or I mean a bunch of new audio files, and we don't need to do that. So just keep them in here so Logic can, doesn't have to do double duty and double space on your computer. Yes, we want to change the sample rate to 48 kilohertz. Now that we have our audio files in the bin, we can just select them all and drag them over. I'm going to drag them right to the front. <clears throat> Whenever it asks this, just say use existing track so it uses this first one too. Tempo information, sure, why not? I'm not sure if this is the actual right tempo, but there's a click track, so we'll be able to check. Um, and let's see. So next we are going to line up this click, and this is a live, live recorded song. It's actually recorded at a wedding. Um, so they, um, they, instead of doing a normal reception at their wedding, they actually had a worship concert. So this was recorded live. And what we're going to do is try to line up this click with our logic click. Select all these. Mm 
I'd say that lines up pretty good. Close enough. Um, it's not going to be super important because I'm not going to be doing a bunch of time related stuff. All right. So now we have that. And now we really don't need this click track anymore. So I'm just going to mute it. I'm going to push H to hide it. Then you just push H again and it is now gone. And then I'm also going to go through the first thing I like to do is just organize it. So I like my drums first because that's what I normally mix first. So we're going to do kick, snare, and go tom one. There's only two toms, a high tom and then a tom. And overhead left, overhead right. <clears throat> and then now, normally if I'm working by myself, I don't go through and color all the regions, but since this is for YouTube, I will. All right, so we'll go option C. We'll do the drums in red. That doesn't look red, but whatever. Do the bass, dark blue. Oh, I didn't even finish organizing it. So we're gonna go bass, guitar, guitar one, guitar two. This is an MC mic or a prayer mic. I'm actually just going to mute that for now. Um, Tim is a singer, guitar player. And for the synths, um, we're going to go there. Okay. And so guitars will do green. Since we'll do this color, then my people, we will do this. All right. So now we're organized, colored, and next we are just going to get a little bit of a rough mix. Okay. So let's see what is going on here. I have no idea how loud this is going to be. Okay, so this bass came in as a stereo track, but I'm pretty sure it's a mono, so I'm just going to click this uh, channel mode button here, flip it to mono so I don't have to deal with stereo plugins. Okay, so that's mono, and then one of these guitars is actually an overdub that we went and recorded after the fact, but it was just recorded direct, no, no amp. So... It's actually coming in a little low, so I'm actually going to gain this up a little bit. And so most people would call this gain staging. Um, a lot of people are really hardcore about gain staging, but I'm not one of them. So, I mean, I do want my levels to be good, but I don't believe gain staging is going to make my mix completely suck, especially with the floating point in the doll. So all I'm going to do in Logic, it's easy. You just come over here to the left this region area and you turn up the gain
This is actually a newer feature in Logic. You used to have to do it the hard way, like double click on the audio, audio file, save it, transform the gain up. Um, I mean, Pro Tools has always been able to do it, but Logic finally caught up and it's so much better. So now that one's gain staged. Um, and we'll put, in, we'll put an amp sim on it later. Uh, but the guitars are going to be panned <clears throat> left and right. Now let's figure out what is happening on the overheads just to make sure that they're labeled correctly. I like to mix drummer's perspective because I'm a drummer. Um, and so this sounds right, the ride's over there. Okay, so they were labeled correctly. We're gonna pan the toms a little bit. And then just uh, keep dialing in the levels. Okay, so now we kind of got our rough mix set in. Um, you can see it's not it's not clipping the master, which is the most important thing. Um, we have a little bit of headroom to work with. Okay, so that's all good. We got our panning done, rough levels in. And so now... To me, this is one of the most important steps in mixing, but the problem is I can't even show it to you because of copyright. But now is when you would go and you put on your, your favorite song, you put on a reference to the song you're about to mix, and you just let that soak in on your monitors, and it'll, it'll tune your ears for the rest of the mix. So I'm going to put on music. Um, I can't show that to you in video because, like I said, YouTube will flag it and take this video down. Um, but I'm going to put on, typically for, you know, I, I do a lot of worship and church mixing. So I'll put on Elevation, Bethel, uh, Vertical Worship, bands like that to kind of get my ears in the right, right setting. So I'm going to do that and then we will jump back into the mix. 